Um, so now let's start this class, okay? Um, so if we recall what we have gone through last class, we mainly talked about the new particle removal device, right? That's the electro electrostatic precipitator or ESP. Um, so last class, we mainly derived some equations, uh, which is uh, used to describe what is the efficiency of the ESP um, or the simplest type of the ESP, right? And um, uh, for this class, we're going to go more details about the, about the uh, practical considerations of the ESP. Okay? But before we introduce new contents, let's still do a quick recap, right? So uh, last class, we mainly introduced uh, the mechanism of the ESP, right? So the way it works is um, <clears throat> we're going to charge the particles with these very thin wires. So these are called the um, discharge electrodes or the coronal discharge uh, electrodes. We know that it's basically connected to high voltage, which is ionizing the air flowing by, right? If we generate these highly concentrated ions, they can charge the particles and then uh, let the particles get collected onto the plates. Okay. So basically the coronal discharge will give the particle charges because we know that uh, under natural condition, not a lot of particles are, get, are charged with uh, uh, ions, right? And then the grounded plates, they will collect the particles. So finally, we derive the equation, which is uh, describing the the concentration of the particles at the end of the ESP, right? So it satisfies this equation where the log CL, basically the concentration of the particles at the uh, length of an, uh, at the end of an ESP that has a length of L, right? Divided by C0, that is the inlet concentration. Uh, so the log of this concentration ratio is going to be negative W, which is the migration velocity. AP, this is a plate area on two sides, right? Okay, so because we, when we collect the particles, the plate will collect on both the, basically the left side and right side of it, right? So this is a plate area on two sides, and QC is the flow rate of the flue gas, right? So one thing we didn't talk about is the uh, particle removal, removal efficiency, okay? So when we talk about efficiency, uh, we're basically talking about how, what is the concentration of particles getting removed. So you see for this equation, it is giving you the concentration of particle that penetrated from the, the, from the ESP, right? So if you recall the geometry we learned about. Right? So this CL is the concentration at the end of the ESP. C0 is at the inlet of the ESP, right? So this equation only tells us what is a penetrated particle. So the deposited particle is just going to be one minus CL divided by C0, okay? So this is the efficiency of the ESP, okay? So um, uh, basically this is the equation that we talk about. Um, this is the equation that uh, um, this is the equation that's describing the performance of the ESP with this uh, simple geometry, okay? So now let's look at a problem. Okay? This is a short quiz. Um, we can spend some time on the calculation. Okay, so let's say we have a ESP that is having this most simple uh, geometry. Uh, so let's say that this ESP, ESP showing the figure has a collection efficiency of 90%. Okay, so let's say this one has a 90% efficiency. So if we double the length of the ESP, what it means is that uh, we change to another plate. It has a length of 2L, okay? We also have the wires here. Uh, while maintaining the same height, the same plate distance and the flow rate, what is going to be the new efficiency? Okay, so I have a few options here. We can do a pull here. Okay, <clears throat> maybe we can spend two or three minutes on this problem.
So for those who are still calculating this uh, problem, I may, uh, I can probably give you more hint, okay? So we mentioned that the concentration of the particles will follow this exponential relationship, right? So basically, if we plot out the particle concentration as a function of the distance from the, from the inlet, the concentration will decrease exponentially, right? So with this information, you can think about how, uh, what the answer would look like. So I'll give you guys one more minute. Okay, I think all of you have answered, share the results, okay. Um, so I think, I'm glad to see that most of you get the correct answer. Uh, I saw quite a few, quite a few of you who answered very quickly, chose the first option here, okay. It's probably because uh, of the, I gave the hint a little bit later. Um, so I hope you can understand why this is 99% um, quantitatively, because here what I'm showing in this exponential curve is uh, this qualitative understanding, right? So concentration will always decrease, which means that if we extend the length of the ESP, the efficiency will become higher and higher, okay? So if we know that the efficiency will become higher, we know that it's actually above 90%, right? It will not be 100% because there will always be particle penetrating through the ESP. It won't be 180%, mainly because we're not uh, creating particles to, to remove them, right? So the maximum will be 100%, but we know that we, it cannot reach to 100% efficiency. So the only option is 90, 99%, okay? But why is it, right? So I'll just uh, do a quick derivation here. Um, so if we know the collection efficiency is 90%, we know that the penetrated particle, Cl, is basically 10% of the C0, right? Right, so basically the pen penetrated particle is 10% of the original concentration. So under this situation, we know that the collection efficiency is 90%. So what this means is that log Cl divided by C0, is log 0.1, and that's going to be equal to negative W A P divided by Q C, right? So this is our, um, based, based on that equation, uh, we can derive this relationship here, right? So um, this also means that 0.1 is equal to exponential of negative W A P divided by Q C. So we're trying to solve for the new CL, let's say CL prime for this ESP that has double the length, right? So um, basically for that ESP, one, one thing we know that the QC is not changed. So QC is not changed, W is not changed. The only thing that changed is the AP here. So AP become twice of the AP, right? So we can list all the equation. Uh, there's quite limited space here. I'll, I'll list all the equation here. So basically log or let's say CL prime divided by C0 is equal to negative or exponential negative W multiplied by 2AP 
divided by QC, right? So for the exponential term, we know that if there's a two, then that simply means exponential minus WAP divided by QC squared, okay? So two here will become outside to be squared. And since we know this relationship, exponential of WAP divided by QC is equal to 0.1. So here will become 0.1 squared, which is 0.01, okay? So this is the penetrated particles divide by the original particle concentration, right? That is 0.01. And therefore the collection efficiency for this new ESP device will be one minus 0.01 which is 99%, okay? So basically, uh, when we try to use this equation to derive the efficiency, we always need to convert the efficiency back to the penetrated fraction of the particles and then plug in the values, right? So that is the thing that we want to know. So I'm glad to see that most of you get the correct answer, um, but I hope that you can understand uh, quant quantitatively how we derive this answer. Right. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that this equation has a name. It's called the Dutch equation. So um, basically, the equation that we have talked right now is for a particle, uh, is for an ESP that has this very simple geometry here. Right. So uh, we also mentioned at the end of last class that in industrial ESP, we also use this equation, but the or, or we give new meanings to different parameters in the equation, right? So uh, in industrial ESP, let's say actual ESP. We also have this Dutch equation, which is log CL divided by C0 equal to minus WEA divided by Q, okay? So still, CL is the concentration of particle at the end of the ESP, okay? So the only difference is that now we have uh, new meanings for the parameters. The WE here is called the effective migration velocity. Okay. So this is different from this W here, right? because for the whole ESP, entire ESP there, the migration velocity will be quite different from the condition where you just have two plates, okay? So the A here is the total collection area. Okay, we'll talk, we'll talk more about this total collection area later on. And then Q here is the total flow rate. So the flow rate of the ESP, okay? So it's also different from this simple ESP here, right? For this simple ESP, it's just composed of two plates. But this Q here is the total uh, flow rate, which is basically the, the ESP that we show at the beginning, right? So we have um, a setup that has different sections or different mechanical fields, right? Then it has an inlet here and then an outlet. So this Q here is the total flow rate going inside the ESP. Okay, so um, basically in actual ESPs, we still use this Dutch equation um, because in terms of the overall system, it should still follow the basic mechanisms of particle removal, right? Because let's say if we do uh, two of these ESPs, these industrial ESPs in parallel. Let's say we we'll build another one here, right? So the concentrations should still decrease exponentially, right? It's not going to remain the same. It's not going to reach 100%. The concentration should decrease exponentially. So it still should follow this type of relationship, okay? So for these two, uh, for this new form of the equation, typically people will give the effective migration velocity so they have some exper uh, 
parameters that's based on the experiences operating the ESP. So we don't need to worry too much about this parameter here. So typically, when we design the ESP, this parameter is already ready, right? So for the flow rate, and that's just dependent on the combustion process, right? how much coal we put inside, how much air we put inside, and then we can calculate what is the flu, uh, flue gas flow rate. So the only thing that worth um, some consideration is the total collection area. Okay, so um, let's say here. Yeah, so again, this is the equation for this two plate ESP and we're saying that the equation still works for the entire ESP, right? So only thing that worth some discussion is the total collection area, which is uh, this parameter here, or the A here, okay? So if you remember, um, in the beginning, when we, show the, uh, when we show the actual ESP, maybe I should go all the way back to here, okay? So we mentioned that the ESP is not composed of one section, right? It's not composed of a, a very long plate there because uh, if we just use a very long plate, <clears throat> then if the plate has some issues when we need to replace them, it's go it is going to diff be difficult to replace it, right? When we build them, it's also going to cost more. So that's why people actually divide the ESP into different sections. We know that for different sections, it has a special name, which is called the mechanical fields, right? Okay, so let's say we use the letter M to represent the number of mechanical field. Okay, and then we know that in each mechanical field, there are quite a lot of plates here, right? Let's say we use the number N here, the lower, lowercase N here, to represent the number of plates in each mechanical field. Okay. So we know that because of this relationship, the, the total number of plates that's being used in the ESP will be N equal to M multiplied by N, right? So this is the total number of plate that's being used. So now if I ask the question, what is the, the area, the total area of collection inside this ESP, right? So when we're talking about the, the collection area, um, that's being used as a parameter in, this, in that Dutch equation. So what is the total collection area of the ESP? So we mentioned in our last class that uh, in, our, in each mechanical field, not all of the plates are collecting particles on both sides, right? Because the plate that's at the beginning and also at the end of the mechanical field, they're just using one side to collect the particles. So because of that, when we calculate the total collection area in each mechanical field, we need to exclude those two areas. We need to exclude those two sides, right? So the way we do that is basically, let's say if we know the length, we know the height, right? So that's going to be N multiplied by H multiplied by L, divide, uh, or, and then minus 2HL, or let's say 2N, HL minus 2HL, right? So the reason behind that is HL is just an area on single side, right? We multiply that by two. That is for each plate, we have two sides collecting particles, right? And then multiply by N, which is a total collection area that's on both sides. But we know that for the plate that's at the beginning and at the end, we only have one side collecting particles. So we need to minus this 2HL here, right? So what we have is basically um, 2 HL multiplied by N minus one, right? So this is for single mechanical field. We have this area of the place that's collecting particles, right? So it's not directly using N multiplied by H multiplied by L because we need to consider those two area that's not collecting particles. So I hope that I, I have make it clear for this single mechanical field, right? Let me know if you have questions, type in the chat, right? So we know that the ESP is composed of 
m number of mechanical fields, right? So if we want to calculate the total collection area of the particles, we'll simply multiply by multiply this term by m, right? We have m number of mechanical field, and in each mechanical field, we have this area that's collecting particles, right? So this is how we derive the collection area of the ESP, All right? So I'll just um, copy this term here. So the collection area of the ESP will be equal to M multiplied by N minus one multiplied by two HL, okay? So if you recall, in our last class, we actually defined this term as the AP, right? A plate, the plate area, area of the plate on two sides, right? So basically the collection area of the ESP will be equal to M multiplied by N minus one multiplied by AP. So this is the, um, so let's say if we have an ESP, we'll tell you what is the number of mechanic fields, we'll tell you what is the number of plates in each mechanical field. Then we should be able to calculate this A here and then plug it in to calculate what is the penetrated particle efficiency, uh, part, penetrated particle concentration and also the efficiency of the ESP, okay? Um, so this is um, something that's actually a little bit complex. We uh, design the ESP system. So we have an example problem later on. We can show how we can use this concept. Okay. So if I write this equation again, the collection area of the ESP, we know the number of mechanical field is M, the place in each field is N, we have M multiplied by N minus one multiplied by AP. Okay, but typically the way uh, it works for designing the ESP is reversed, okay? So uh, you may have questions that people ask, right? So uh, people want you to calculate what is the efficiency if we build such an ESP? And then um, if, I, if I give you the number of plates, number of the, the number of the mechanical field, what is configuration of the ESP, right? And then I ask you what is the efficiency? But typically in design problems, it's reversed. So what happens is um, the problem will give you an efficiency, okay? When we go to design the ESP, then the, <clears throat> the problem will be, let's say we want to build a ESP that has 99% efficiency. Then what is the collection area? Or what is the number of plates I should use? What, is, what should be the dimension of the plate? Right, so the problem is reversed here for a design problem, okay? So then uh, it might get a little bit complex, okay? So typically the problem or the question we have for designing ESP is that it will give us the efficiency that we want to reach or the target efficiency. It will give us the plate dimension because for these uh, metal plates, they're manufactured by uh, different uh, plants, right, different uh, vendors. So they have their own defined dim dimensions. So the plate dimension is already defined there, okay? We know the migration velocity because it's just coming from a table, right? We have the, these numbers based on experiences. And also we have the flow rate. So for this design problem, it wants us to calculate what is the area of the plate and also how many plates we need for the ESP. Okay, so here I have an example problem. So I would say this is very similar to your, um, to your team project problem as well, okay? So it, what it wants us to do, to do is to calculate the total collection area for a 98% efficient ESP, okay? So it gives us the collection efficiency. And we know that the flow rate Basically, the flue gas flow rate it's treating is uh, around 10,000 meters cube per minute. Okay, so it gives us the effective drift velocity or the migration velocity is six meters per minute. So, assuming that the plates are six meters high and three meters long, and there are two sections or the two mechanical fields in the direction of the flow, so it wants us to calculate how many plates are required. Okay, so this is a typical design problem. 
And it's, it's um, more likely the actual problem when we go to uh, a power plant, when we try to build a power plant. Right? So, because EPA gave us the target, so we need to achieve 98% of the particle removal efficiency, then how many plates do we need for this ESP? Right? So, um, how do we look at this problem? Right? Um, I would say we still need to use the Dutch equation. So, I'll just write all the equation here. That is CL divided by C0 outside this log is equal to uh, minus WEA divided by Q. Okay. So we mentioned that the efficiency is equal to 1 minus CL divided by C0. Right? We know that efficiency is 98%. <clears throat> So based on that, we can calculate what is Cl divided by C0. So Cl divided by C0 is just 0.02, right? So we can plug in 0.02 equal to minus We. This is already given, right? That's six meter meters per minute multiplied by A divided by Q. The Q is the flow rate. Right, so that, that's 10450 meters cubed per minute. Okay, <clears throat> so if we do a quick check on the units, right, so on the left hand side, the unit is one, right, it's unitless. On the right hand side, we know that the area has a unit of meter squared, right, so meter squared multiplied by meter per minute, right, so we have meter cubed per minute. Right, so these things will cancel out. So we also have dimensionless uh, parameter on the right hand side. Okay. So if you look at this equation, all the parameters are given. So we can just calculate what is a, a here, right? So based on this information, we can find out that the a is equal to log 0 0.02 multiplied by minus 10450 divided by six, which is 6813 meter squared. Okay. So um, I should say that here, the area that we calculate, this is the flexion area of the ESP, but also we should put a, a subscript here. This is a target, okay? So this is not the real, collection, uh, uh, real collection area, mainly because the real collection area is constrained by the actual plates, right? So it's highly likely that um, the plate that we have for six meters and three meters, three, six meters height, three meters long, um, it will not form this um, collection area. Looks like this, right? So what we need to do is we need to equate this um, this target collection area with the calculation that we shown here, right? So it's n minus one multiplied by AP, okay? So because we need to make sure that our um, actual collection area is as close as, uh, as um, can be very close to this uh, targeted collection area, right? So we know that the number of mechanical field is two, right? So we're trying to solve for the number of plates that's in uh, this ESP here. So the lowercase n is number of plates in each mechanical field, right? And the AP here is the plate area. So AP is two multiplied by H multiplied by L which is two multiplied by six multiplied by three, that's 36 meters square, okay? So if we plug in this equation, we know that two n minus one multiplied by 36 should be equal to six, eight, one, three. And if you do the calculation, you can find out that n is actually equal to six, eight, one, three divided by four multiplied by six three plus one that is 95.6 
Okay. So this is what our calculation tell us. The number of plate in each mechanical field is 95.6, right? So are we going to build a mechanical field that let's say had 60% of the uh, plate at the end, right? Is it going to be a fraction number in each mechanical field? No, right? We have to use a integer, which is 96. So we need 96 plates in each mechanical field. We cannot use a fraction of the plate in the mechanical field. So that's why um, the target collection area is not the real collection area. Right, so the actual uh, the real or the actual collection area have to be based on the actual number that we use in the ESP here. So what this calculation tells us is that actually uh, for most of the scenarios, this n here will not be an integer. So we have to um, basically change it, or increase it to an integer. So this, um, so while we um, find this integer here, there's another interesting problem. Let's say right now, if we run it up, we have 96. But what happens if we have 95.1? Are we going to lower it down to 95 or increase it to 96? We should increase it to 96, right? Because we have to guarantee a collection efficiency that's higher than the target efficiency. If we use a lower number here, then the collection, actual collection efficiency will be lower compared to the target collection efficiency, right? So we have to round it up to get 96, okay? So it doesn't matter uh, what is the number that's off the digit. As long as it has a digit after uh, the integer here, we always need to round it up, okay? So for this problem here, uh, what we know is that the number of plates that's in each mechanical field is 96 plate, right? And then, if we know that there are two mechanical fields, two sections, we know that the actual number of the plates will be n, m, m multiplied by n, which is two multiplied by 96. That's going to be 192. Okay. So we need 192 number of plates in this entire ESP, okay? So we solve this problem here. And now if I ask you, what is the actual collection area of this ESP, right? The actual area. Or the actual collection area of the ESP. So say, So the actual collection area will have to be based on the actual number of plates in each mechanical field and also the number of mechanical fields, right? So we will calculate that is M multiplied by N minus one multiplied by AP, okay? So that's two multiplied by 95, 96 minus one multiplied by 36, okay? So you can find out what that area is, right? So that area have to be larger than the target area of the ESP, okay? So I hope this process is clear enough. Let me know if that, uh, if you didn't catch, or didn't follow with me, right? So the way we solve that is basically still use this Dutch equation. So we'll first find out what is the required or what is the target collection area of the ESP? Well, the target area is not necessarily the actual area of the ESP, right? because we cannot build um, the system that just have half of the plate. So the plate number have to be integers. So that's why we will equate this target area with the, um, with the actual area of the ESP, right? And then by plugging in the number of mechanical fields and also the plate area values here, we'll calculate what is the number of plates in each mechanical field. And for this problem, we find out that 
is 95.6 plates in each mechanical field. And we will not be able to build a mechan mechanical field that has 60% of the plate, right? So we have to round it up to 96 plates, right? And then if we know this actual number of the ESP plates, we can calculate what is the total number of plates and also what is the actual collection area of the ESP. So this is the logic behind this design problem. It will also apply to your um, team project problem, okay? Um, so this is basically the example problem on your textbook. So if there's anything not clear with this process, you can also refer to your textbook, okay? So I will have to say that there's one minor difference um, between our solution and the textbook solution here, okay? So it is all the same um, until the target area of the ESB plates. We have the same number here. So the way the textbook solve this problem is basically, uh, so inst you remember, instead of using M multiplied by N minus one, multiplied by AP, so the textbook solve in this way. So um, basically it plug in the total number of plates in here, okay? So we mentioned that the total number is M multiplied by N, right? M is the number of mechanical fields, right? N is the number of plates. So instead of using this uh, expression here, the textbook basically um, put in or expand this bracket calculation, right? It use M multiplied by N, which is a capitalized N here, total number of plates, and then minus the number of mechanical fields. So basically it has this way, and N minus M, which is also AP N minus M, right? So it tries to solve that in this way, okay? So, um, we can also get this similar answer here, okay? So uh, if you plug in the A with the uh, 6813, you can find out that N, uh, the, the answer they get is 191.3. We know that the total number of plates cannot be a fraction number, right? So you have to run it up to 192. So we have the same answer here. But I would say that um, there are some problem with this calculation, unfortunately, uh, for this solution here, uh, although the answer it gets is correct, but I would say there are some problems with this uh, method here, okay? So let's say, for example, um, if the answer that we get is not this value, if, the, if we get an answer of 190.2, okay, 190.3, yeah, let's say we uh, design for another efficiency, right? And then finally, when we calculate the total number of plate, it turns out to be 190.3, right? And then what should we do? We should run it up, right? Because we have to guarantee that collection efficiency. So if we run it up, that's 191 plates, okay? But this is not the end yet, because we know that there are two mechanical fields. And when we build the ESP, <clears throat> each mechanical field have to be identical, right? So by meaning identical, we mean that the number of plates that's in each mechanical field have to be the same, right? But if the total number is 191, it won't be the same. Because in that way, in each mechanical field, you will again have half of plates, right? So we have to further bump it up to 192, okay? So this is a problem uh, associated with this method, right? So you have to think about, um, have to make sure that the final answer of the total number of plates have to be divisible by the number of mechanical fields, right? So it have to be, if we divide this number by the mechanical field, um, it has to become an integer, right? So let's say if we define a, uh, if we try to look at a ESP that has five mechanical fields, let's say M equal to five. And then if we use this method and it turns out that N is equal to 90.5, okay? If we use this method, then we first need to bump it up to 91, right? But we need to make sure that the total number of plates have to be divisible by the mechanical field. So we need to change it all the way to 95. 
but this won't be a problem when we use our method, right? Because in our method, what happens is we're trying to solve for the number of plates in each mechanical field, okay? So if we guarantee that this is a number, or this is an integer value here, then we will always make sure that the final number of plates will be divisible by M here, okay? So I would say that um, both methods are correct. Um, I prefer to use our method, right? Because for the method in the textbook, it might involve further considerations of the, uh, of the design problem, okay? Um, so you'll get more practice with the design of the ESP. Uh, I think there are two or three homework problems on uh, this topic. Uh, so finally, it's about the power of the EST. So we mentioned that the EST actually caused quite a few power, right? Although it uses high voltage, um, but the situation is that uh, the current that's uh, being used for these high voltage power supplies are very low, okay? So the power um, that's being used is basically the product of the voltage and the current, okay? So if the voltage is very high, but the current is very low. Then the power will also become moderate, right? It's not uh, difficult to manage, okay? So uh, this is how we can calculate the power that's being consumed by the ESP. So if we know the voltage, know the current going through the corridor, then we can calculate what is power. But for a lot of power plants, we're generating power, right? So we can just extract a small fraction of the power to uh, support the the ESP system, right? Um, yeah, as I mentioned, even though the voltage is very high, the current flow due to the I migration is low, so the power consumption is not reasonably high. Okay. So finally, it's about the calculation of the uh, effective drift velocity. So uh, the effective drift velocity can be calculated with the, this equation. Okay. So it's dependent on the the power that's consumed by the ESP is dependent on the actual collection area and also a number K here. So the number K here is based on the experience. So it's also basically it's dependent on the material type, right? Uh, what type of PM we're treating and also what is the typical size of the PM we're talking about. So if we know these um, conditions, then we can refer to a table that's in our textbook, right? and then plug in all these values to calculate the, the, calculate the effective drift velocity, okay? So um, this is how we can design a ESP system. So we're not going to use a lot of these parameters here for the homework problem, but I think you will use that in your team project. So uh, do read the textbook to get an understanding of how we can um, make the design problem into more details, okay? But I would say right now we'll just focus on how to calculate or how to use the efficiency to calculate the number of plates and also the collection area of the ESP. All right. Um, so I would say that's all for the contents of this class. So we're going to finish a little bit early this time. Um, so we won't have class this Friday. Um, I will make the homework problems of, uh, for this time available maybe today. And that's going to be due next Friday before the class, okay? So um, let me know if you have, have any questions on the calculation process. I also post the lecture so you can go through it again to uh, understand uh, how we are solving this problem, okay? So- I have a quick question for you. Yeah. What's the, uh, the variable in the numerator there for the drift velocity equation? Oh, is this A here? That's the collection area. So, um, uh, yeah, that's the... Beside PC at the very bottom? Yeah, th this A here, right? Oh, right yeah. above it. Oh, right above it. Oh, is... oh, okay. Uh, let me remove that. This is K. Oh, okay, perfect. This is K. This is a constant. All right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions?
yeah, is there a specific number of plates that like an average ESP would have, or is it just kind of going to be problem by problem? Like, is there uh, it's going to be problem by problem? It really depends on let's say it really depends on what is the scale of the power plant, right? Or the, what is the scale of the industrial plant? Let's say if you generate a lot of a, a humongous amount of particles, you also need a high um, flow rate, flue gas flow rate going through, right? So in general, I, I would say that the more the the higher the flow rate, then the more the plate you're going to need. Right? Also, the higher the efficiency. Let's say the target efficiency is very high. We're talking about 98 percent. If we want to use 99.9 percent, .9%, then also the number of plates will be much more. Right. So uh, it really depends on uh, the problem we're talking about. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah.